Hello, you guys. How are you all on this wonderful day? This wonderful Friday. What a great day it is to be back in the presence of our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and our personal Messiah and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Um, today's message is going to be entitled, We're Living in the Last Days. In parentheses, what the war is. We're living in the last days. In parentheses, what the war is. By now, you should see what's going on around you. You should be able to view what's going on around you as no coincidence and no secret at this point as to what you see going on in society, what you see going on in the culture, what you see going on, not only in the United States of America, but what you see going on around the whole entire world. Um, there is a war going on. There's a war. Now, for centuries, there have been a myriad of different wars, you know, and the myriad of wars that we have been fighting all comes down and is based upon or are based upon one war, one particular war. So out of all these wars that we've been fighting, all these wars that they told us, and when I say they, I'm talking about those who operate in, in politics and in religion, in all of the facets of society and this world, they have told us that the war has been over oil, the war has been on drugs, the war has been on poverty. They, they've told us that the war has been on classism, racism, all of these different wars that they have told us that, that we're fighting. But all of these different wars all boil down to and sum up to a spiritual warfare, all right? But out of all the wars that they told us we were fighting, I need you to understand that there are two particular wars. There are two wars. Actually, there are three wars. There are three wars, three war, three big wars that you need to pay attention to uh, within this spiritual war. The first war is Jacob against Esau. Jacob against Esau, that is one of the wars that take place or that's taken place, have been taking place within spiritual warfare. Jacob, now who's Jacob? Jacob is Israel. Who was Edom? Edom is Rome. So you have a fight against Israel, and I'm talking true Israel. I'm not talking about the created state of Israel where the Ashkenazi Jews, the false Jews are known as the synagogue of Satan. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about true Israel. I'm talking about so-called African-Americans, black folk over here in the United States of America and scattered to the four corners of the earth, right? Um, that are descendants of Hebrew slaves. So if you are a so-called African-American black person over here in the United States of America, you are a descendant of Hebrew slaves that fought and bled and died and were slaved out over here in the United States of America. So that's part of the war. Now that's Israel. Are y'all here? Are y'all listening? That's Israel. Okay. Now, when you look at Israel and Israel being Jacob, in Israel, being the true bloodline Hebrews that the Bible speaks of versus Edom, Esau, who was wrong, you see that there is a war between true Israel, the true biblical Israelites, the true bloodline Hebrews versus Rome. Now, who is Rome today? Rome is summed up to this Western culture of the Romans and the Greeks, all right? Now, Rome today is the United States of America. That's Rome, right? We know that the United States of America is spiritual Egypt. I need y'all to catch this because I'm going to go 
Um, I'm going to go in different directions with this, and I don't want to lose you. The United States of America is spiritual Egypt, all right, where the Hebrew slaves came back, went back to a place called Egypt where we should not have made this journey again. So this is spiritual Egypt in the United States of America. But because of the paganism, pagan traditions, pagan celebrations, pagan religions, this is also Mystery Babylon. But it's Mystery Babylon politically, commercially, economically, technologically, educationally, and even religiously. This is Mystery Babylon, right? Now, also, this is Rome, Rome and Greece. This is a Roman and a Grecian culture, all right? Now, the reason why this United States of American system happens to be Rome is because of the law enforcement and, and the governing powers. So the United States of America's government and also the law enforcement is made up of what ancient Rome was comprised of in terms of the political and economical structure, which is the reason why we have law enforcement, we have governments, or we have the governors, and we have mayors, and the president, and we also have magistrates, judges, lawyers, and things of that nature. See, that's the Roman culture. So when you sum up the United States of America, you have spiritual Egypt because of the slavery that the Hebrew Israelites of the bloodline of the Bible have been subjected to over here in the United States of America up underneath the European power structure. That's spiritual Egypt. But then you also have Mystery Babylon. But then you also have the Roman Empire. So when you look at the United States of America today, you have Egypt, you have Mystery Babylon, and you have Rome. But then you also have Greece because the Roman culture took over or amalgamated with the Grecian culture. So when you look at the Roman culture and the Grecian culture, this is Roman Greco culture. Okay. Now we know that the Grecian culture is Hellenism. Hellenism is Greek influence culturally, artistically, politically, and economically. That is the Hellenized culture in which we live. So again, when you look at the United States of America, you have to consider these pagan nations that make up, that are condensed down to one, which make up the United States of America. So we have Egypt, spiritual Egypt. You have Babylon, mystery Babylon, and you have Rome and Greece, which com which all comprise of or comprise together, condensed together to make up the United States of America. All right. So the war is against, is Jacob against Esau. That's the war. That's one that's one aspect of the war that's being fought within spiritual warfare. The other aspect of the war that we're fighting is the 12 tribes of Israel versus the 13 satanic bloodline royal families. So the number 12 represents our heavenly father, Yahuwah's perfect government. All right. Now, 13 represents a Freemasonic number, which represents rebellion or stands for rebellion. 13 is an occult number, which means rebellion. Now, it is no coincidence that the elites of the world, the high level Freemasons, they worship Nimrod. Nimrod's name means rebellion. If I'm not mistaken, and you can check this, if I'm not mistaken, Nimrod is the 13th from Adam. So when you look at the 12 tribes of Israel, 
And you consider the number 12 representing Yahoo's perfect government versus the 13 satanic royal bloodline Illuminati families. Don't you see Yahoo's perfect government against Satan's rebellion? Well, see, that's the warfare within the spiritual warfare. Now, if you don't understand that, then you won't understand the last days. You won't understand the last days. Now, I need you to go to Psalm. Go to Psalm chapter 2. Go to Psalm chapter 2. Now, I made some references. I made some references yesterday to uh, the financial system and, you know, and the, and the monetary economical regime that that is being put that has been put together over here and established amongst the whole entire world based upon uh, the central banking cartel and the Federal Reserve. Now, I was saying yesterday how they continue especially Biden, how he had given a hundred billion. He gave a hundred billion over there to Israel based upon a humanitarian aid relief package, right? Now, that all of that money is part of the reparations that we're supposed to be given. And when I'm talking about rep reparations, I'm talking about the compensation, the recompense that's supposed to be for the true he the true Israelites descendants of Hebrew slaves that built this nation. All right. Now, 95 billion was also sent over there to Israel as a military aid relief package. So when you look at these humanitarian aid relief packages, which is which was 100 billion and a military aid relief package over there, which was 95 billion dollars, you can see that that's 195 billion dollars. All right? Now I thought that we were 34 trillion dollars in debt. So again, that just goes to show you that there is money in war. There's money in war. So all that money that's supposed to be used and allocated for poverty, for jobs, for, 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 for the, for the freedom and liberation and for the establishment and the betterment of the lives of the descendants of Hebrew slaves that fought, bled, and died on this soil of the United States of America because they built this country, you can see where we won't get anything, but then you see where the war is. You see where the war is. Now, go to Psalm chapter 2. We are still witnessing and we are still looking at on the center front stage of the whole entire world, the war that's still going over there, going on over there in, in Israel, right? Israel against Hamas and Hezbollah and all of these so-called terrorist groups. And the war just keeps brewing up. I mean, there's just so much going on. It's a tit for tat back and forth. No one knows what they're looking at. Then you have some people that say free Palestine. And then you have others on the other side saying, uh, saying uh, free the Israelis and pray for Israel. But what you don't realize is that that is another war that is on the front center stage of the whole entire world to distract the world off of who the war is really about. I need you to understand that. Because the war between the Israelis and the Palestinians, that is a tailor, that's a tailor-made war and a contention by those who own the Middle East. So when you consider the Middle East and the war that keeps brewing up over there. That is a main distraction from the real true war, but then it's a main distraction from who's actually engineering and manufacturing that war over there. Because at the end of the day, the Israelis, the created state of Israel, the Ashkenazi Jews, listen, they would not have lost to the Palestinians, nor would the Palestinians, Hamas, Hezbollah, would they have lost to the Israelis. Both factions, both of those sects over there, both of those 
regimes over there, they would have lost against the New World Order. They would have lost against Rome and the European Union. That's who they would have lost against. So, so don't look, get your eyes off of the Israelis and the Palestinians and they bombing back and they launching airstrikes and they, they bombing and they doing suicide and they doing all of these things over there. And it's just a tit for tat and innocent men, women and children are dying. Elderly people are dying and, you know, Biden and whoever, whoever, whatever president keeps sending billions and billions of dollars over there to bail out Israel, the creator state of Israel. Stop looking at that. Look at the end goal. The end goal is for the new world order to take over mid the Middle East over there because Rome has real estate over there in that area, in that area of Jerusalem. That's Rome over there. The Roman Catholic Church owns that area over there. Now, I need you to understand that because you have Rome, but then you also have the United Nations. OK, the European Union. Now, the Bible talks about the, the, the scripture speaks on this man of lawlessness, the son of perdition, the anti mashiach And then the scripture also alludes to the false prophet. Now, you know that the false prophet is going to come from Rome, going to come from the Roman Catholic Church. But then you're going to have the man of lawlessness, the son of perdition, the anti mashiach He's going to come from the political side. Get it? So the false prophet is going to come from the universal government of the Roman Catholic Church. But then the anti mashiach he's going to come from the political Zionists which happens to be the Rothschild family. That's where the anti mashiach is going to come from. So when you look at that area over there, it's all going to belong to the New World Order. The Israelis will not have, they will not occupy and obtain that land, nor will the Palestinians. So when you look over there now, when you see the fighting going on and all that, that's just a distraction to keep you from seeing the real powers that are working and operating behind the scenes, Right? And then what it does is it over emotionalizes the people and it pulls the heartstrings of the people to choose what side when in reality, all those people over there are dying in the midst of this war. Right. And then when you when you point out or when you pull the heartstrings of the people's hearts and minds and, and, and you use emotionalism to choose whatever side that the people feel like is suffering the most and they wind up choosing Israel, they're not even choosing the true people who have been suffering for over 400 years. You're choosing the staged people. You're choosing the false people. While Israel, true Israel, the true Hebrews are suffering and struggling in poverty, dying every day on the streets of America, been dying, we rooting for the wrong people. We rooting for the wrong side. We're rooting for the wrong, for the wrong side in, in a tailor-made war used to distract the whole world from, from the key players that have manufactured and engineered this warfare. So you need to understand what's happening in the last days. Okay. Um, Again, they keep fighting over there to keep you from seeing the real major players behind the scenes that are not only that are not only operating over there in that land and they have subjugated that land so that it will be funneled into their hands. They are also using their deceptive and brainwashing tactics over here in the United States of America <laughs> to keep us blinded from what's actually going on and the powers that are working. All right. So you need to know that the United States of America and the creative state of Israel, they are closely linked. All right. They both together operate. So that means that the United States of America washes the back of the creative state of Israel and the creative state of Israel washes the back of the United States of America, which is the reason why the United States of American Christian churches, Protestant churches, they all pay homage and they are all on board with the rectification of the suffering of the so-called Israelis over there. In other words, 
when there is an issue, when there is a problem, when there is a riot, when there is violence, when there is an insurrection over there, when anything brews up over there military, militarily for the Israelis over there, the Christian churches come together and they all convene and they are on one accord with, we got to pray for Israel. We got to pray for Israel. We have to relieve Israel. We have to send packages to Israel. And that's the reason why three to six billion dollars all right, of United States of America's dollars go over to fund the created state of Israel. Now that's three to six billion dollars annually, which should be going to true Israel over here dying in the streets of America. And we are impoverished and we are the ones that are that are still behind the eight ball, stuck in the rut, can't get out, under, still underneath racism, still underneath tyranny, still going through all of the atrocities, all of the delinquencies of this nation, and yet we have yet to get anything. Okay? So that's the reason why, again, the Christian churches and all the Christian pastors, they pay homage and they honor and they are on board with giving assistance to the created state of Israel when really the Christian pastors over here, especially the so-called African-American Christian pastors should be preaching about true Israel who is over here suffering in the United States of America and abroad and to the four corners of the earth. Need you to check that. Okay. So now let's go to uh, Psalm chapter two. I'm, I'm, I'm talking this because I need you to understand where the war is. Need you to understand where the war is. So did you get it? So when you look over there in Jerusalem, when you look over there in the creator state of Israel, all of that land, that whole area down there is going to belong to the new world order. It's going to belong to the anti-Mashiach and the false prophet. The anti-Mashiach coming from the political Zionists. All right. The Bilderberg group underneath Rothschild. And then you're going to have the false prophet coming from the universal government of the Roman Catholic Church. So don't you see the war? Jacob, real, true Israel, bloodline Israel, Yah's chosen people of the bloodline, the true Hebrews, Jacob versus Esau It's Jacob versus Esau. Israel, true Israel versus Rome. See? And the reason why and the reason why racism and classism and and sexism, you know, because it's right now, look at it. It's the women against the men. That is the sexism. That's the sexist war. See that. See that they keeping us distracted with men against women. Who's supposed to be making more money? And if the man doesn't make enough money, then the woman you know, then the woman is battling against the men because the women feel like they should be, the women feel like they should have a man that makes six figures and the men feel like shouldn't, uh, the men feel like the women who don't do anything or do, does not contribute to society and contribute to a household, they should not, they should not have a man that makes all that money because what do they bring to the table and, you know, what are the, and, 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 and the differences between men and women and, you know, the roles and duties and responsibilities and what men deserve versus what women deserve and all of this. See, that's the, that's the sexism. That's the class of sexism that they're using, right? That's keeping us fighting against one another. So we don't see the real players. So we don't understand the real war. See, so it's a war and a battle between men and women, right? That's the, then it's classism. It's class, the upper class versus the middle class versus the lower class. When you don't even realize they're looking to knock out the middle class and it's either you're going to be on the lower class, right? Impoverished, or you're going to be part of the upper class, which are your billionaires and trillionaires, which own the whole entire world. Because don't you know that 26, 26 people, there's 26 people that own half of the world's wealth. And I guarantee you that you or I are part of the 26. Nor are those who are battling continuously over things that don't even matter. Okay. Um, yes. And then you have racism. Now, why is racism still 
an issue. Why do they still bring up race? That's because they need the black. They need to continue to, to push the narrative about blacks being against whites and whites being against blacks. Why? Because that's not, that's another scheme to keep us divided and separated. So we don't come together in the spirit of Yah to fight the real enemy. Because part of the cataclysmic events and the catastrophic chaos that they're trying to brew up in this world, namely the United States of America, is white against black. That's what they're trying to brew up. So their will so that in the end, when the system is totally, utterly drained and collapsed, we will be so divided against one another that we can't even go against the enemy that we can't come into an agreement, we can't come into agreement under the spirit of Yah, in the spirit of Yah, to set apart spirit to go against the enemy. See? So the spiritual warfare is good against evil. Right? I need y'all to see that. So when you look at the war, when you look at the warfare, what's the warfare? Jacob against Esau. Now we have a spiritual warfare, but there are there are uh there are different there are important wars. These are the most important wars that you should be looking at underneath spiritual warfare. These are the most important wars. What's what are the most important wars? Jacob versus Esau. All right, the 12 tribes of Israel versus the 13 satanic royal bloodlines of, uh, of Satan's regime, okay? And then you also have the seed of the serpent versus the seed of the woman, right? The anti-Mashiach versus Yahusha's people. Because it would be the serpent, which is Satan, against the seed of the woman, okay, which would be Yahushua HaMashiach. It would be Yahushua HaMashiach versus Satan, the serpent. But Yahushua HaMashiach won the war already. So now the main fight is against the anti-Mashiach, the spirit of the anti-Mashiach, anti-Mashiach, which is the seed of the serpent, but then you must realize, okay, you have the serpent, you so which is Satan. The serpent, which is Satan, right? His seed is the anti-Mashiach, all right? But from the anti-Mashiach is birthed those who operate under the spirit or within the spirit of the anti-Mashiach. Just like you have Yahushua HaMashiach, Okay, you have the woman, which is Israel, birth of Yahushua Mashiach, and then those who were born again, we have the spirit of Yahushua Mashiach, the spirit of our Heavenly Father by receiving Yahushua Mashiach. So that's the warfare. I, I, I know that's a lot of information, but I hope that y'all receive that. So you need to, you need to understand these wars. And it's all under the tent of spiritual warfare. Okay? Jacob versus Esau. 12 tribes of Israel versus the 13 bloodline royal satanic families. And then the seed of the serpent versus the seed of the woman. That's the warfare. Those are the three wars. Those are the three main wars underneath the tent of spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Psalm 2. Are y'all here? Do y'all understand? Y'all, y'all, I mean, y'all quiet. I don't see nothing. I don't see nobody. Y'all here? Y'all, y'all, y'all understand where I'm coming from? Uh, Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2. So they want to brew up a civil war because they want to, they, because that's going to aid in, that is going to aid in the final collapse. What's going to put the cherry on top as it relates to the chaos and the catastrophic events and these cataclysmic events that are going to happen? They need black. They need black folk. They need race. They need black against white. That's what they need. They need black against white. See. 
That's the reason why there's such a war on information. That's the reason why there's a war on information. And that's the reason why when you, when, 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 we, when we began to now talk about Yahusha's color and who Yahusha really is, what happens? I told y'all, well, his color doesn't matter. And while we got to deal with race and pull the race card, when Caucasians, when white supremacy and white and white racists, they have been pulling the race card for years. So all of a sudden now we know the true origin, the true tribe, the true color of our true Hebrew Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, who is not a Christian. Now that we understand and know and embrace the truth, all of a sudden now, oh, the, the color doesn't matter. You know, why can't we all come together under Christ Jesus and all of that? But why wasn't y'all saying that before the truth came out? Why wasn't y'all saying that when so-called African-Americans were joyfully and happily honoring and worshiping this white Romanized Jesus of the Roman Empire, still up underneath tyranny, still up underneath slavery, still impoverished, you see, still, st still degraded, dehumanized, still racially profiled. See, still subjected to police genocide. Well, nobody was talking about that then. Nobody was on our side then. No one was giving us humanitarian aid relief packages then. No one was giving us military aid relief packages then. But see, now all of a sudden, the Hebraic awakening then came up and became so explosive and so monstrous that it began to saturate and cover up all of the lies. And all of a sudden now, because we're talking about the truth, so-called African-Americans, black folk who are descendants of true Hebrew slaves, all of a sudden we racist now because we're talking about what the racists have actually perpetuated and what they have done and what they have created and what they have strung along. Right now. This is not a race thing. This is not a race war because at the end of the day, you know, we are all one in Yahushua HaMashiach. It's just that we had to get down to the race. We had to get down to tribes, bloodlines. We had to get down to the key players. We had to understand what happened so that when we look at what's going on around us in terms of these ethnic groups and terrorist groups and tribes and nations doing what they're doing, we can line up what we see with what the scripture says, you see. And so again, now we are in the end times and now all this truth is coming out and everyone's going into frenzy and the Christian pastors are just as silent as mice. They still preaching the same regurgitated messages that they've been preaching for the last 10, 15, 20, and 30 years. And they have still yet, and, 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 they, and they have still yet to 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 uh, pinpoint and to put on the table of discussion who the true Hebrews are, but because because that's important. The reason why it's important is because we have those who say that they are, but they are not. We have those who are reaping the benefits of humanitarian aid relief packages when all of that money, all the billions of dollars that have been sent over to these other nations belongs to us. But then you should also understand we won't get that. We won't receive that. So when you look at the struggles and you look at the issues and you look at uh, the, the enslavement and you look at the dehumanization and the degradation and you look at those who are at the bottom of society, impoverished, you see, in, 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 in these urban cities and these ghettos and hoods all across America and in these other nations, you can clearly see who the true people are because the true people are not living in luxury, living in wealth. We are not living in royalty. Do you understand that? That's how you can see who the true people are. Okay. Uh, let's Psalm two. Let's go to Psalm uh, chapter two. Listen to this. Listen to this, right? So, the fight is really, I told y'all before, it's against Yahushua Mashiach. 
But Yahushua HaMashiach is one. He's one already. They cannot get to him. They cannot destroy him. They cannot decimate him. He's, he's already, I mean, he's at the right hand of the Father. So you can't get to him. So the next best thing, the, the, the next best strategy to get to Yahushua HaMashiach is for all these nations, Edom, Esau, is to conspire together to go against Yahushua HaMashiach's people who operate off of the set-apart spirit who have received him. Okay? Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2. Listen to this. Verse 1. The question poses, why do the nations rage? In other translations, that na the nations, the word nations is heathens. Why do the heathens rage? Why do the heathen rage? Why do the nations rage? Who are raging? The nations. The nations are raging. The nations are raging. That's why you hear war, that's why you hear wars and rumors of wars and nation against nation, nation rising up against nation and kingdom rising up against kingdom. But all of that is just the scattering and that's the that's the confusion and the, you understand what I'm saying. But the war is against Yahusha. That's the war. But then the war is against his people. Why do the nations rage? Nations, United Nations. Why do the you because the United Nations are going to be in power against Yahushua's people? You understand? See, it's not going to matter at the end. It's not going to matter what color you are. The United Nations is going to be against everybody. The United Nations is the dragon. That's Esau. That's Rome. The dragon. The dragon is going to be against anyone who receives Yahushua Hamashiach. Anyone who receives the truth, whether you're Japanese, whether you're Asian, whether you're Korean, whether you're Hispanic, whether you're Caucasian, whether you're a true bloodline Hebrew, it's not going to matter. Right now, they're using division tactics to get us divided so we never see the dragon. So we never come together in agreement in the set apart spirit to fight against the dragon. That, that's, that's what you need to understand and see. Okay, now, the, the, now, Psalm chapter 2, verses 1 says, Why do the nations rage? Why are the nations so angry? Why are they launching all of these attacks? Why is there so much persecution by the nations? And it says, and the people, why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? <laughs> Meaning, why do they plot things, plot tactics, plot strategies? Why do they plot these things that are useless? OK. They're plotting and strategizing wars, chaos, catastrophes, tragedies. Why are they doing all of that? Why do the why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? Why are they doing that? The, listen, verse two, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. So when you consider the nations raging, the United Nations, the kings of the earth, all of your mayors, presidents, governors, senators, all of those who are in power, all of your high level Freemasons, your high level religious leaders, your politicians and your high level entertainers and CEOs that own corporations, own the music industry, own the movie industry, own the farmland, all the kings of the earth. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. The European Union, the universal government of the Roman Catholic Church, all of these people are coming together. They abandon themselves together. Now, why are they doing that? that? That needs to be the question. Why are they doing that? Then it says, uh, verse 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah and against his anointed. That's what they're doing. It's against the anointed. It's against, it's against Yahuwah and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces. See? So all of these nations and the kings of the earth are coming together with the rulers and they are looking to go against Yahushua. But they can't go against Yahushua, so they have to go against Yahushua's people, which is then still 
an attack launched against Yahushua. Because when you go against Yahushua's people, you hurt Yahushua when you go against his people. You can't hurt Yahushua directly. You can't hurt him personally. But what you can do is go against his people. And so the nations have come together, they have convened together, the kings of the earth, the rulers and all of these different regimes and nations and, and, and all these corporations and CEOs. And uh, again, all of these political systems and infrastructures, they have come together to go against the anointed one. Okay. Verse two, again, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers, the rulers, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah and against his anointed. That's Yahushua saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. OK. So the kings of the earth and the rulers, they have come together to go against Yahuwah and his anointed, who is Yahushua HaMashiach. But then those who have received the set apart spirit from Yahushua HaMashiach, we are the anointed ones. And they're saying, the nations who rage, they're saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. They. So there's still, the nations are still battling against our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and our personal Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. they still battling. They can't win, but they still battling. Now, why are they still battling, although they can't win? That's because Satan has deceived their hearts into making them think that they can win. Satan knows why you think the scripture says that, um, woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. And he's enraged. He's angry. Why? Because he knows that he has a short time. He has a short time to do what? To deceive mankind so mankind can give in to his demands. So mankind can be on Satan's side and go to hell for eternity with him. That's the goal. So in order for these men to have been deceived, they had to be up under the hypnosis, the deception, and the tactics that Satan uses, like wealth, fame, fortune, the whole entire world and its resources, false, deceptive safety. They have been promised, these kings of the earth and these rulers who have banded together to go against Yahuwah, our Heavenly Father, Yahushua HaMashiach, our true Hebrew Messiah and Savior and Yahushua's people, they, these people, these kings, these rulers, they have been promised fame, wealth, some of them fame on a lower level, but mostly wealth, power, prestige. The whole entire world and its resources, they have been promised that. But listen to this. It says, verse four, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. Y'all's laughing. Y'all laughs at their plot. Y'all laughs at their strategies. Y'all's laughing at their attempt to try to overthrow his kingship and his scepter. Y'all's laughing at them because y'all knows that he has the final laugh. But before he has the final laugh, he's up, he's on his throne laughing at all of their strategies and tactics and all of what they're doing to try to ensure that they will take over, but they can't. So verse four, he says, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. Yahuwah shall hold them in derision. Yeah, mock them, laugh at them. Verse five, then he shall speak to them in his wrath. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. What does that mean? That means that the kings and the rulers of the earth, they're going to be stressed out. They're going to be stressed out, worn out. They're going to be confused. They're going to be angry based upon the deep displeasure of our heavenly father, Yahuwah. Meaning he's going to confuse their plans. Meaning his wrath is going to come upon them. Meaning that whatever they're putting in place will not, will it, it will not be able to.
carry out what they want to carry out. It will not be successful. Their attempts to try to destroy the world and 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 and, and, the, and the world be in their hands will not will not happen. It will not work. Okay, verse four, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. Yahuwah shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Meaning all of the stuff y'all put, all of these uh, tactics and all of these strategies of warfare that they're trying to put together to go against Yah and his people, it will not work. It won't work. And then it says, verse six, yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. Who is he talking about? Yahushua Mashiach. He has set his king. He has set his king on his holy hill of Zion. Meaning that the kingdom of Yahushua Mashiach will be established while all these other kingdoms will be destroyed. Now, what's the last kingdom to be destroyed before Yahushua returns? The United Nations. This is where all the kings of the earth and the rulers are going to be positioned. The kings and the rulers of the earth, they will be positioned within the United Nations to come together, convene together, conspire together to go against Yahushua HaMashiach. But before they do that, they are going against his people. That's the reason why day by day, the attack is on us. Day by day. The goal is to take out as many of Yahushua's people as they can. So by the time they get to Yahushua, they won't have to deal with Yahushua's people in the way. That's what you're facing right now. Why you think there's such an attack on us by way of the food supply chains? They're poisoning the water, poisoning the food, poisoning the air, poisoning our minds with this perverted violence filled entertainment through music and through movies. Why you think they're doing that? They're doing all they can to destroy us in any and every way possible and even destroy us spiritually through these pagan religions, these pagan demonic religions, destroy us spiritually through fraternities and sororities, these secret societies operating off of this dark occult knowledge. Who's doing this? Who's doing it? Esau, Edom, who's doing it? The dragon, who's doing it? The serpent, who's doing it? The 13 royal bloodline satanic families, who's doing it? Do you understand? So now you see what the war is? The European Union, that's who's doing it. The nation's rage. And the people plot a vain thing, a useless thing. And the kings of the earth set themselves against the rulers and take counsel together against Yahuwah and against his anointed saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their courts from us. Verse four, he who sits in the heaven shall laugh. Psalm chapter two, verses four, he who sits in the heaven shall laugh. Yahweh shall hold them in derision. Verse five, then he shall speak to them in his wrath. Meaning directly after the laugh of Yah, his anger sets in. Verse six, yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. Verse seven, I will declare the decree. Yahuwah has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Oh, so now we, uh, now this is prophetic. This is a prophecy. Now let's point to the Hebrews of the bloodline who say that there is no such thing as Yahushua HaMashiach and they don't believe in the new covenant. Now, how is it that you know, you are old covenant only, right? Meaning that you only have to study one aspect of the scripture, one aspect of the Bible, 39 books of the old covenant, and you still can't see the prophecy of Yahushua HaMashiach being foretold in the old covenant. How, how you can't see that? So that just goes to show that some of our people in the Hebraic bloodline, you know, that they have been blinded by Satan too. Because they can't see Yahushua HaMashiach, which is a dangerous thing, which is a hindering thing. Why? Because you can't even get to our Heavenly Father without going through Yahushua HaMashiach. Without Yahushua HaMashiach, there's no hope. So the goal is to blind, blind folk. The goal of Satan is to blind people 
from Yahushua Mashiach. See, it's to keep people from believing in Yahushua Mashiach. It's to cause people to question the authority and the authenticity of Yahushua Mashiach. It's to get people to deny the blood of Mashiach, deny the crucifixion of Mashiach. Deny the kingship of Yahushua Mashiach. That's the goal. Okay? So verse 7 says, I will declare the decree Yahuwah has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. So all of the nations will be the inheritance of Yahushua Mashiach who will sit on the holy hill of Zion. Meaning all of these kingdoms, all of these political governmental regimes and infrastructures who have been ruling with these wicked kings and rulers and wicked men and despicable corrupt leadership, where they will all be destroyed in all of the nations. In other words, the whole world will be the inheritance of Yahushua Mashiach. Yahushua will own everybody. He will own all the nations. Okay? Verse 7 again. Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. I will declare the decree. Yahuwah has said to me, you are my son. Yahuwah has said to Yahushua, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Our heavenly father, Yahuwah's only begotten son, Yahushua Mashiach. I will declare the decree. Yahuwah has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. So there's coming a day where, guess what? The United, why you think it's going to take all of the nations to go against Yahushua? Why you think? <laughs> it's going to take the whole world. It's going to take all the nations. That's the reason why the plan of the United Nations, which is really none other than the New World Order, the anti-Mashiach, right? The man of lawlessness, the son of perdition coming from the political side of the Zionists. And you're going to have the false prophet, which is going to come from the universal government of the Roman Catholic Church. Why you think their goal is to get everybody subjected to them and the mark of the beast? See, this is Satan wanting to wanting to impregnate and implant his mark and implant his spirit and implant his seed in the whole entire earth so that no one can be saved, so no one can receive salvation, so that by the time the inheritance of the earth and the nations become Yahushua's, won't nobody be deemed credible or worthy for salvation. Y'all you, you, understand that? So that's the reason why verse 7 says, I will declare the decree. Yahuwah has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Verse 8, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Verse 9, you shall break them with the rod of iron. There go that iron scepter. Yahushua returning on that white horse, faithful and true. And all of his saints, all of his set apart ones, all of his soldiers on white horses, Yahushua HaMashiach, going to return with the iron scepter, with the sharp sword coming out of his mouth, striking down the nations. Who are we talking about? The United Nations, y'all. That's the reason why they have to use the sustainable development goals against us, so that we could take the mark and forfeit our salvation. But the only way they can do that is to deceive us, to make us think that we're, we're coming in to perfection. We're coming into this utopian world, that we're coming into a world of no issues and no problems, no famines, no financial collapse, no diseases. We're coming into a place of uh, unity and peace and wealth and prosperity and togetherness. And you understand? So they must deceive us. Satan must deceive us into receiving the United Nations plan of this false utopian world because this is Satan this is Satan using the new Jerusalem of our heavenly father Yahuwah and Yahushua Mashiach our true Hebrew Messiah and savior as his tactic to try to get us to go with him right it's the perversion so the United Nations plan and this new world order plan is Satan's perversion of the new Jerusalem of our heavenly father Yahuwah and our true Hebrew Messiah Yahushua Mashiach 
Okay, let me help you. In order to be eligible to operate and to, re and to reap the benefits of this new global system being put in place, which is of the United Nations, the new world order, you must take the mark, right? Well, the mark is the seal. The mark will seal you. The mark of the beast will seal you and will seal inside of you the anti-Mashiach spirit. Those of us who receive Yahushua HaMashiach, we are sealed with the set-apart spirit. Satan's goal is to seal you with the anti-Mashiach spirit based upon you taking his mark. Because once you take the mark of the beast and you are sealed with the anti-Mashiach spirit, you can no longer receive the set-apart spirit of our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, by receiving Yahushua Mashiach, being eligible for the New Jerusalem, which will be here on earth. Do y'all understand that? Let me read that again. Psalm chapter 2, verses 7. I will declare the decree... Yahuwah has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Verse 8, acts of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Verse 9, you shall break them with the rod of iron. You shall break them with your iron scepter, meaning his wielding authority. This is his authority. This is his power, right? This is his sovereignty. That's what the iron scepter is. His authority, his sovereignty, his power. You shall break them with the rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Dash them to pieces. Remember the book of Daniel again. Talked about that rock cut out of the mountain without human hands that will crush all these kingdoms. Well, that rock happens to be Yahushua HaMashiach. He, that rock is the stumbling stone that those who don't believe in him stumble over. Okay. So he said, listen. Verse 9, you shall break them with the rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Verse 10, now therefore be wise, O kings. You better be wise, O kings. You better be wise and sit this one out. Sit this war out, kings. You better bow down and venerate Yahushua kings. He says, now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve Yahuwah with fear. You better serve him with fear. Why? Because you plot a vain thing, meaning whatever you plot, whatever you strategize, whatever you plan is useless. So you might as well bow down. You might as well honor and revere him. Get it? So he says, now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve Yahuwah with fear and rejoice with trembling. Verse 12, kiss the son. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. And you perish in the way. Yeah, kiss the son. Kiss Yahushua. Bow down to him and say he's king. Bow down to him and say he's the one. He's the one in power. He's the one that has authority. He's the one that has sovereignty. Well, that, well you know, the scripture already says that in Romans chapter, Romans chapter 14, verses 11, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You see, so, dude, that's why he's saying, be wise, O kings, because y'all going to wind up bowing down anyway. If you're not destroyed first, <laughs> whichever occurs first is either you're going to bow down to me and you're going to kiss the son or you're going to be destroyed. Which one? So he said, verse 12, kiss the son lest he be angry. Now, that goes for everybody, not just the kings and the rulers and the judges of the earth. That goes for every human soul on the face of this earth. You better bow down. Otherwise, you're going to be subjected to his wrath and anger. And you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled, but a little blessed are all those who put their trust in him. There you go. There you go. Now. The military power. The military. Now, the United States of America. Has been. Deemed. As the world's global superpower, the world's global military power. That's the reason why the city of Washington, D.C. is the military power. OK, and that's the reason why Washington, D.C. is the nation's capital. So the military power of the United States of America. Has 
has been deployed and has, well, first of all, has been manufactured, engineered, and then deployed by Washington, D.C., which is the nation's capital of the United States of America. So that's the military power. All right. Now, the military. So now when you look at the United States of America, what are we? We are a plantation. This is a plantation here, but it's also a corporation. And it's also a military power. So when you consider the Navy, the Air Forces, the United States Marine Corps, the Army, what are they used for? What are they really used for? They're used to fight the war of the, the wars of the European Union. They're used to fight the wars of the political Zionists. They're used to fight the war of the Bilderbergs and the Trilateral Commissions and the Council on Foreign Relations and the Club of Rome. See, all of the Agenda 2030, the New World Order, Rothschilds and all of them. That, 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 that's who the military is to fight for. So while we go on overseas to so-called fight terrorism and to go over and decimate those who have a potential chance of coming over here to the United States of America to decimate us. We're really going over there killing millions and millions of innocent men and women and children just to do what? Open up these nations for further financial exploitation for the Federal Reserve. I need y'all to understand that. So all these years we've been fighting Israel's wars. The creator state of Israel. We've been fighting their wars over there. Ain't had nothing to do with us. So all of the wars in which the United States of American troops have been fighting and innocent young men and women and innocent young men and innocent young, innocent young men and women from the United States of American soil joining the military, we have been going overseas and dying for nothing. Because somehow we were bamboozled and deceived into thinking that innocent men, women, and children in poverty were going to somehow come over here and destroy us when they can't even make it over there in their countries, living on the poverty line. We went right over there, and then that's the reason why they had military weapons. See what I'm saying? And our military and our troops, young men and women, our troops going over to these countries, bothering these people. And then when our people, when our young men and women from the American soil go over there and come back home in body bags, all of a sudden now, we trying to figure out what happened. We talk, we, we, it is almost like we don't understand why this is happening to us. And so they told us it was a war on terrorism. That's what they told us. They said it's a war on terrorists, a war on terrorism. And we got to go over there to fight them because if we don't go over there to fight them, they're going to come over here and they're going to beat us and fight us and destroy us. When in reality, how they going to come over here to destroy us and fight us when they don't own any planes, they don't own any weapons. They have no money. They have no monetary financial backing over there. They ain't got none of that. So our military has been going over there for years, over there in the Middle East, over there in Kuwait, over there trying, you see, opening that oil up. What, what, what was we doing over there? We were opening up the resources over there for further European colonization, imperialism, capitalism, and exploitation. That's what we was doing. Let me help you. Who owns the oil? Rockefeller owns the oil. Who owns the iron? Carnegie owns the iron. Who owns the diamonds and the gold? Oppenheimer. All of these are banking families. Rockefeller, Carnegie, Oppenheimer. Oil, iron, gold, diamonds. That's the reason why we went over there. That's the reason why we were sent over there to make sure that those resources over there in Africa were maintained by the European power structure. That's the reason why. Hmm. 
But these are the nations that's raging against Yahushua. Because at the end of the day, who are we going over there to battle against and fight against? We're fighting against Yah's people. Because let me help you. Yeah, there may have been some Palestinians. There may have been some other nations and ethnic groups in the way. But these people had no idea what was going on. These were innocent people who had no idea about religion. These were innocent people who had no idea about politics. See, come on. These were innocent people who had no education. They ain't know nothing about no entertainment. All they know is that we have all these. Why do you think the nations hate America so much? They hate us because we keep going over there bothering them. So again... When you see the immigrants being sent over here and brought over here in luxury and they're getting SSI checks and they're getting free room and board and free clothes and free food and free cell phones, why are they coming over here? They're coming over here to be against us when the final catastrophic, chaotic, end time cataclysmic events take place, then we'll have those who hate us over here against us. And then they will fight against us and they will attempt to destroy us. Why? Because they will owe Big Brother, they will owe Esau, they will owe the European power structure, right, for all the free amenities and free resources they've been getting for coming over here. See? So let me help you. It's a war against humanity. But first, the goal has always been to make sure we stomp out, make sure we decimate Yah's chosen people of the bloodline. Why? Because they were given the law first. Get the bloodline out the way. Because not only is the bloodline descendants of Hebrew slaves that were over here in this country, we are descendants of Yahushua HaMashiach by the bloodline. Now, spiritually, we can all receive Yahushua HaMashiach and be born again, right? Blood, blood, blood washed, sanctified, and we could be saved to receive salvation. But then there's a bloodline. See, so you can't reject and negate the bloodline because first, the war has always been against the bloodline. And then after that, we'll get anybody, we'll get any. We'll get any nation, we'll get any ethnic group who has an opportunity to receive Yahushua HaMashiach by the Spirit. And that's what the scripture talks about when it says that the dragon was enraged at the woman. Who's the dragon? The dragon is the serpent, Satan, papal Rome, pagan Rome, right? The dragon is enraged at the woman, which happens to be Israel, because the dragon is enraged at the woman, why? Because Israel has always been resilient. Israel has always been too strong. Israel does what? When Israel is suppressed, when Israel is oppressed, what do we do? We reproduce. We grow too numerous. Wasn't that what happened in Egypt? He said, listen, man, we need to, he said, listen, we need to, we need to force, we need to enforce harsh labor. We need to put, we need to put harsh labor over them. Why? Because they're growing too numerous. And if a war breaks out, they will join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So when you oppress Israel, true Israel, true descendants of Hebrews who came to America, fought, bled, and died, slaves in this nation to build it up, they're, they're, Fear was always that we would grow too numerous and rise up against the powers that be. It was always the fear that Israel, Jacob, would rise up against Esau, rise up against Edom. That was always the fear. See? So, yes. Hispanics, Japanese, Koreans, Asians... Caucasians, Arabians, East Indians, all of us have an opportunity to receive Yahushua HaMashiach by the Spirit because we can all receive salvation because the Spirit that we receive, the set-apart Spirit that we all receive by receiving Yahushua HaMashiach is the Spirit of our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, that raised Yahushua from the dead. See, so we all, humanity, has an opportunity to receive eternal life, but at the same time, we cannot reject the bloodline, though, 
because the bloodline is always used first. Notice the bloodline of the bloodline Hebrews, y'all's chosen people of the bloodline of the scripture, we were always used first to be exterminated. Now we are at the end of the book. It's all about the extermination of humanity. Why? Because now that the truth is coming out, it's like people are running now to get saved. People are running now for the truth to get saved. And so that's the reason why they're trying to put a cap and a lid on the truth coming out because they know once people, once those who have oppressed true Israel, those who have been Th those who have been against true Israel, those who have raci racially oppressed true Israel, they're going to get fearful. And in the end, they're going to embrace the truth. And that there's an opportunity and a chance that they might all run to Yahushua to be saved. And so, see, Satan doesn't want that. See? So because Satan doesn't want that, he's doing all he can to try to cut off humanity, period. But always first in line is the bloodline, Hebrews. It's always the woman. It's always the woman, Israel. And then if he can't get the woman Israel, true Israel, he'll just settle for the Gentiles, the offspring. The offspring are the Gentiles. So he said, okay, fine. If I can't get true Israel, if I can't get the bloodline Hebrews, if I can't get y'all's chosen people by the bloodline, I'll just get humanity. I'll get the Gentiles. I don't care at this point. Because I know my time is short. So my time now, I need to get anybody I can who has an opportunity still to receive salvation by receiving the truth of Yahushua Mashiach. So anybody that can receive the way, the truth, and the life, I got to get them out of here. And so there's an all-out attack and an all-out assault in the minds and the hearts of the people. Why do you think in these end times, what is Yah judging the most out of bloodline? Yah's really not, he's looking at his bloodline. Don't, don't think that he's not. He's considering his bloodline. He's considering his chosen people of the bloodline. He's considering the atrocities, the delinquencies, and the racial oppression and the racial injustice that has been launched against his bloodline. But he's also looking at the heart too. So, see, this is the reason why you should understand that just being a bloodline Hebrew is not enough to get you in. Because at the end of the day, Yah's looking at humanity. He's looking at hearts of people. Yah's looking at the hearts and the minds of people. You see. So, I need y'all to understand this because this is the war. This is the war we're in. Now, what did I tell y'all? I told you, I, I didn't told y'all what the war is. So that's the reason why when you look at secular Christian TV and these modern commercial secular Christian churches, not only on TV, but even in your neighborhood, in your state, in your city, in your town, you don't see, you don't hear any of them preaching the end time. You don't hear any of them preaching Bible prophecy, end time Bible prophecy, rarely. You don't hear any of them talking about who the true Hebrews are, true Israel. Why? Because they have already been brainwashed by America's brainwashing tactics to honor and to be in support of the created state of Israel. See? That's the reason why the United States of America allies with the created state of Israel. They're allies. They're friends. They're family. They're even family. They're friends. They're buddies. They're allies. And they wash each other's back. Just to keep the lie going. It's to keep the lie going. It's to keep the lie afloat, alive, and it's to keep the truth hidden and suppressed and not talked about. So we need to get all of the politicians, we need to get all of the religious leaders, we need to get all of the educators and the entertainers on board with the lie. And that's the reason why they all say, oh, we got to pray for Israel. Oh, we got to send humanitarian aid relief packages to Israel. Oh, we got to help Israel. Oh, we got to rescue Israel. We got to pray. We got to do all of this stuff. Now, why are they doing that when really true Israel is over here? 
So much so, so much so that true Israel is on these Christian churches, in these Christian churches, preaching on their pulpits. That be true Israel, teaching true Israel that we need to pray for the Israel that has been masked, that has been put out there, masqueraded. As the, they are the imposters. So we've been praying for. We've been sending three to six billion dollars annually over there to the imposters while the true people over here still scrounging around, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. We still over here chasing money, still fornicating, still in sin, you know, still hating one another, still trying to keep up with the Joneses, brainwashed by our religion, politics, entertainment and education. And we don't even realize that we y'all's chosen people of the bloodline so-called African-Americans, black people in these Baptist Christian churches underneath these pastors as Freemasons that have been sold out to the system to keep hush, to keep suppressed and hidden who the true biblical Israelites are. You can understand that. That's the whole war. Because the goal of Satan is to keep y'all's chosen people of the bloodline in sin. Is to keep them in sin. That's always been his goal. And hopefully, hopefully, we'll be tuned in and we will be, we will be enslaved for eternity. We will be enslaved for eternity if we keep on. That's the reason why Israel going in and out of slavery all this time, all these years, for thousands of years going in and out of slavery. He saw y'all need a savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Now we all had an opportunity to receive him by the bloodline, but then remember the bloodline rejected him. So Yahushua HaMashiach went to the Gentiles. That's the reason why the word went to the Gentiles. See? So now... We need to receive Yahushua Mashiach and live for him so that we do not do what? So that we do not wind up in slavery again. So that we do not wind up in slavery for the last time, which is going to forfeit your eternal life forever. Think about it. Just think about it. Okay? Um... Now, let's go to Revelation. Let's go to the book of Revelation. So you need to know that. The goal of these Greek fraternities and sororities, whether they worship Babylonian gods, Egyptian gods, Grecian gods, or Roman gods, and Freemasonry, which is occult knowledge, occult ancient mystery knowledge of Egypt and Babylon, the whole goal was always to keep under wraps and keep hidden who Yah's chosen people of the Bible are, which are the Hebrews, Hebrews by blood, and Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the goal. That, 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 that was the goal of the Freemasons. Notice, what do Freemasons push the most? What are they still pushing? They pushing politics, they pushing religion, and they pushing entertainment, and they pushing education. But they say nothing about y'all's chosen people in the Bible. They say nothing about that. See? That's the reason why in order to get in Freemasonry and, and any one of these fraternities and sororities, what are the prerequisites? What is one of the main prerequisites to get in? That you believe in a higher power. They don't, it doesn't matter who you believe in. Now see, that that's Satan deceiving the whole world through false religions, false traditions, pagan traditions and pagan religions, and these secret societies of this ancient mystery knowledge of Egypt and Babylon, occult hidden knowledge, which is Freemasonry. The God of Freemasonry is Lucifer. He's the head of all, he's the head and in charge of all these religions. So when we look in the scripture and we see that Satan has deceived the whole world, how has he deceived the whole world? He has deceived the whole world through religion. 
through politics, through entertainment, and through education. So he has the whole Freemason. So he has Freemasonry, which is a religion. Freemasonry is a religion in itself. And that's the reason why just believe in a higher power. It doesn't matter if you're Christian. It doesn't matter if you're in Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism, Taoism, New Age, you a Wicca. It doesn't matter what religion you're in in Freemasonry, just as long as you believe in a higher power. The great architect of the universe. Now, who's that? Who's that? That's Lucifer. That's Satan. But this great architect of the universe is only the great architect of the of the world system. See. I hope this is making some sense to y'all. I do. I, I truly hope that this is making some sense. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13. I, I've had this this week, uh, these past several days. An urgency came over me. That's the reason why many of you all, um, you know, who fellowship the Davis ministry, you've seen me do a myriad of messages in these past several days. I mean, just a, uh, it's just a, it's just a, you know, because the enemy, the enemy got to working on me, you know, uh, you know, um, several weeks ago. And even I would even say for the past several months, the enemy has been trying to, the enemy has been kind of trying to work on me, you know. Um, I don't have nothing else to do, nothing else to say. I'm done with it all and all of that. And I, and I, no, no. And you, you had to rebuke that. See, this is where spiritual warfare must take place. So don't think that pastors don't deal with this type of stuff. No, yes. True, true pastors, ones who are really preaching the truth and saying what needs to be saying, say it. Preaching the truth, saying what needs to be said, and 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 doing the best they can to walk this walk out. See, this is the dragon. This is the enemy sapping the power of those who have pertinent information and revelation, divine revelation. See. Okay, now I am not going to uh, do a historical view on this. I'm not going to do a historical view because I've already done this teaching many times, and I've done uh, the the prophetic in terms of um, in terms of the ancient history behind this particular passage. Because remember, now there is there there is present. There's a present interpretation, but then there is a past historical interpretation. I'm not going to do the historical interpretation. I'm going to relate this particular passage to what we see today. So go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Okay. Revelation chapter 13. Okay. So I'm, like I said, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go back through history to bring this forward. I'm just going to cover today. I've done teachings on this where I went through history and I brought it all forward to the present day, but I'm going to go present day with this. Yeah, I just I just felt this urgency to get out as much as I possibly can get out, you know. Uh, while I can get it out. And I know I've said some of the same things over and over again, but then it's almost like, well, see, I can't, I can't forget because you can, we can forget that, wait a minute, no, some of this needs to be regurgitated and reiterated because so many people don't know this. They don't know this. So it's almost like, yeah, in the midst of it, we'll be preaching to the choir, but look at how many lost souls that we'll be reaching by preaching to them the truth that they never heard. So it's important that, that we continue, especially leaders, those who have been commissioned and anointed to be spokespersons and mouthpieces for Yah, we need to continue to push this. And now it's just getting that much more intense. 
is getting that much more important. Why? Because now we see that in, in many instances, and in, listen, in many instances, the Hebraic awakening is dying in terms of the initial approach and the initial output of the truth. Like no one wants to hear the heavy cutting, condemning, beat you upside the head approach to the Hebraic awakening. But just because that aspect of it is dying, that does not mean that the solidity, the authenticity, and the importance of the Hebraic awakening is dead. No, that needs to still be preached. It's just that now we need to bring people to this, to salvation with it. We need to not stop at the bloodline directly pointing to one people. We need to tie it all in together as to how humanity needs to receive this truth. And they need to receive Yahushua HaMashiach. They need to come out of Christianity, come out of the white Jesus, come out of the paganism, the pagan traditions and celebrations, and you now need to receive Yahushua HaMashiach. You need to receive Yahushua HaMashiach because if you try to go any other way, you will not make it if you try to go any other way. Do you understand? I mean, this is, I mean, this is very, very, very critical and it's very crucial, very crucial that we understand this. You see, Book of Revelation the book that we're in, in the last days, the last book, the last book of the Bible, and ain't nobody preaching it. Every pastor, every Christian pastor in every Christian church in the United States of America and the whole world should be preaching out of the book of Revelation. And if they not, you need to leave the church. Leave. Leave. If you've been going to this Christian church underneath this Christian pastor for any amount of years and they ain't touched the book of Revelation, leave. 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 Because they false. How are you not going to teach the book of Revelation? And this is where we are. Everything that we see, everything that we're witnessing today, right now, is the book of Revelation. And yet nobody's preaching it. And that's where we are. See? All these pastors, I told you, with theology degrees, seminary degrees, Bible degrees, Bible college degrees, divinity degrees, all this in all of this intellect, all this education, all of this articulation, and all of all of, 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 of these theologians and historians, all these preachers, and ain't nobody touching this. Something wrong with that. And people are going to hell because they don't know the Bible, because they don't know the word. They don't know end time Bible prophecy. They don't, they don't, listen, they don't understand what's truly happening. They don't understand what's truly happening. And I, I'm about to give it to you right now. You ready? I'm about to give it to you. I'm about to give it to you. Now, this is the best indication, identifier, and signifier of those who love you. How can you tell if someone loves you? You can tell someone loves you by whether they tell you the truth or not. It doesn't matter if they don't like you anymore. They hate you. They withdraw from you. They reject you. They mock you. They slander you. They throw you under the bus. It doesn't matter. I got I, There's an urgency that I, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. I got to tell you so that you can wake up. Get up. Wake up. And understand what you are looking at around you so you don't get sucked in. Because I told you more than more than it's the generation. That, OK, before I get into this, you know, you have the silent generation. These are your 90 year olds and 100 year olds. Then you have the baby boomers, your 70, your 70s and your 80s. Then you have then you have Generation X. All right. Then you have the millennials. Then you have Generation Z and the Alpha Generation. Generation Z and the Alpha Generation, these are your 20-year-olds and your teenagers. These are the ones that are going to take the mark of the beast. These are the ones that are going to get their DNA changed and altered if we don't know this word, if we don't know this Bible. It's time to stop the foolishness. Get in the Bible. Get in the word because that's the news. The news media, the news channel stations, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, this is, that that's Satan's, that's Satan's propaganda machine propped up. If you listen to the news all the time, if you were tuned into secular news media channels and you're tuned into cable television and you're tuned into cable television networks and, 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 and you're tuned into radio stations and you're tuned up to entertainment, well, that is what Satan is using. The only true news is the is the Bible, is the word. Why you think they're doing so much to try to keep you away from it? Why you think that why you think that all these countries are starting to ban the Bible? They're persecuting and they are incarcerating those who are preaching heavy in this Bible. And and guess what? 
Before you know it, all of this persecution is coming to the United States of America. All of it. And it ain't going to be no more partying. It ain't going to be no more turning up. It ain't going to be no more smoking, drinking, sex, and fornicating. It ain't going to be no more homosexuality. People going to be crying the blues. Because all of, that, all of that persecution is coming right to the United States of America. Let me help you. This is not going to, in, 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 about, in about seven, eight years, it's going to be a totally different world economy, culture, and society than it is right now today. I told y'all we have six more years before 2030, before Agenda 2030 really takes off. I told you that. I've been trying to tell y'all they're talking about a water shortage in 2025, which is just next year. Now, we don't know when all of this stuff is going to happen, but at this, because they're giving just roundabout dates and time periods. That's what they're doing. So just because it doesn't happen during the time periods and dates that they that they say these things are going to happen, it doesn't mean that they're not going to happen. It's just that these are the roundabout time periods that we need to be looking for so that we can stay on point of what's happening. So they're already talking 2025, which is next year, a water shortage. So what does that tell you? They're already saying by 2027, these global elites and their scientists and their engineers they have been talking about how to achieve eternal life through artificial intelligence and transhumanism by 2027. And then three years after that, you have Agenda 2030, which is the global transformation digitally, electronically, technologically, scientifically of the whole entire world, which is this new world order, which is this false utopia. So this man of lawlessness is coming back. But before the man of lawlessness shows up, before the anti-Mashiach, the Christians call him the Antichrist. Before he shows up, this world system has to be destroyed by poverty, disease, violence, financial collapse. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you ain't got too much time to get your act together. You ain't got too much time to get your houses in order. You ain't got no. You ain't got too much time to decide what side you're gonna be on. I'm telling. Man, I'm trying to tell you. I am trying to tell y'all that this is this is serious. As time go on and as time passes, as we move forward, people are going to be losing. <sighs> people are going to be losing. Churches are going to continue to come down. Whole entire mega churches. The Christian church is coming down. You see it happening. Christian pastors are stepping down from the pulpit. Stepping down. Come on now. You see it. Allegations. Allegations are coming out. Come on. These pastors with secret sins coming out. Sexual allegations against these pastors coming out. The Christian churches are saturated with worldly entertainment. This is the dragon. This is Satan entering the churches. Or shall I say, these are the church, these churches today are exposing themselves for what they've already been. Now, this is the time for Satan to bring from the ashes and bring from the roots and expose the true roots of these Christian churches anyway. So that's what he's doing. Man, if y'all, and, and here's the thing. People can't see it. They can't, it's right happening right now in front of them and people can't even see it. So you don't have a whole lot. Okay, let, come on. Revelation, y'all there? Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. This serious business. People are dying every day by the second. Dying, 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 dying by the second. Leaving out of here. Whole family sick. Whole family units. Whole family structures sick. Dying. Young children, 20-year-olds, teenagers dying. No pre-existing health conditions. Healthy as oxes. How they dying? How they dying prematurely? Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. There's no guarantee you're going to be here tomorrow or the next week. There's no guarantee that your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your relatives, uncles, aunties, nephews, nieces, cousins. There is no guarantee they're going to be here tomorrow. And you just saw them yesterday. They were healthy. Birthday parties. Dead tomorrow. Dead next week. You better get right. You better get right. People are dying and going to hell by the second. Never. Never having repented, never knowing the word. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Because if the parents and parents that have children, if the parents don't know the word, 
How do the children know? How will the children know what's happening if the parents don't teach them? And that means that you have to teach them beyond the curriculum of the school system. Because the school system now is ran by the new world order. The school system now is there to indoctrinate your children and turn them into obedient slaves to not this system, but the new system to come, which is the new world order. So your children are being trained, even adults who are going to college and they're getting their degrees, they don't even know that if they don't have any Bible in them, if they don't know y'all's word, they're being trained for the new system. They're being trained for the new world order. They're being trained for the anti mashiach They're being trained for artificial intelligence. They're being trained for transhumanism. They're being trained now to, to accept their DNA being changed where they will be a robot or beast and a demon. So all that education you're getting ain't going to mean nothing if you don't know Yah's word. It ain't going to mean nothing if you don't know the Bible. It ain't going to mean nothing if you ain't got a prayer life. It ain't going to mean nothing if you don't know how to fast. It ain't going to mean nothing. None of this stuff going to mean nothing. Your cars ain't going to mean nothing. Your house ain't going to mean nothing. Your beauty ain't going to mean nothing. Your strength ain't going to mean nothing. Your money. Ain't none of that going to mean nothing. None of it. None of it. And y'all watch what I tell you. If y'all willing, I be here. Watch. Watch what I tell you. If you still here, watch. And not just me. I'm pretty sure many other pastors have been saying this, but they've been gone in obscurity. Why? Because it's not enough of them. Want me to help you? Want me to tell you why? Persecution. Persecution. That's the reason why you don't hear pastors speaking like this. Why? Persecution. That's why. People might, and let me help you. Remember I told y'all that before physical persecution, social persecution comes first. Social. Meaning, when the truth starts coming out and the truth starts being preached, you ain't got no more friends. You ain't got no more relatives. You have no more business partners. You have no more sponsorship. You ain't got nobody. Why? Because everybody's pulling away from those who are speaking the truth. That's why. So there goes the social persecution first. Where they start withdrawing funding, sponsorships. Don't nobody want to be around you. Don't nobody want to call you. Don't nobody want to talk to you. Don't nobody want to do nothing. Why? It's truth. Nobody want to do that. And it's only getting you prepared for what's to come if you're still here, which is the physical persecution. I'm telling you. Revelation chapter 13. Listen to this. A beast. Then I stood on the sand of the sea. And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now, like I said, I'm not going to go back through history and bring it forward like I've done on many teachings, okay? I'm just going to go, I'm going to interpret for today. Now, this beast that stood on the sand of the sea, a sea, a sea represents a widely populated area. A saturated populated area. That's the sea. Meaning a place where there's a multitude of people. This, 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 this beast rising up out of the sea, meaning a system. That's what a beast is. A beast is a system rising up amongst a myriad and a plethora of people. A beast system. That's what a beast is. All right. So what is a beast in Bible prophecy? It's a superpower, a political power, a kingdom, and a nation. Okay? So this beast is rising up against humanity. Then it says, and I saw a beast. Now this is prop, this is Apostle John saying, I'm, I'm seeing all of this. He says, then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now we know that um, these seven heads happen to represent all of these different nations, these different kingdoms, these different political kingdoms that have been that have been in power and have been ruling. See, all of these kingdoms that have been ruling is going to form into the United Nations kingdom, which is going to be a conglomeration of all these nations, all these countries put together including the United States of America. That's the United Nations. All right? So who are, so, so, so who are the seven heads? Who are the seven heads? Who are the seven heads? The seven heads first, Egypt. That's one head. 
seven heads, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, divided Rome, seven heads, seven heads now. Okay, where are we now? We're in the seventh head. We divided Rome. This is where we are now. Divided Rome is none other than Europe, including the European Union, right? And the, and the European Union, the European Union are these 10 horns, these 10 kings, these 10 European kings. Now, a horn in Bible prophecy represents a king, a kingdom, and a power. So these, so these 10 horns are 10 kingdoms, 10 kings, and they have power. But these 10 kings are the European Union. Well, that's who's ruling right now. They're ruling now. That's why I said you don't understand what's going on when you watch the news. You don't understand what's going on when you see all this, all this, all this uh, political double talk. You hear political double talk. You see all these politicians and you see all this stuff going on in the news and the killing and the shooting and the wars and the kingdoms rising up against kingdoms and nations rising up against nations. You don't know what you're looking at and what you're hearing. And then people just go on about their daily lives and party and do what they want to do and live how they want to live. And they don't even know the book of Revelations planned out right now. Plan out right in front of them. Okay. So the Bible says, then I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast. I saw a system rising up out of the sea, rising up out of a plethora of people. All right. Having seven heads and 10 horns and on his horns, 10 crowns and on his heads, a blasphemous name. All right. Verse two. Now the beast which I saw was a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. All right. Now, I already told y'all what that was. These were these particular wild animals that were prophesied and that were interpreted by Daniel in uh, in the book of Daniel. Right. Because this uh, this 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 um, this bear represented this bear represented Persia. Right. And and this leopard represented Greece and and this lion had represented uh, Babylon. That lion represented Babylon. Right. But hold on. If we bring the lion forward from Babylon today, who does the lion represent? The lion represent the United States of America. That's the lion, the lion with the eagle's wings, because the lion represents England and the wings represent America. Remember, the wings had torn off. It got torn off from the lion. That was how United States of America had broke off from Britain during the time of the Revolutionary War in 1775, between 1775 and, seven, and 1783. Remember, the United States of America, which were the eagle's wings, broke off from the lion, which was Britain, which was England. And that's, that's the lion. The bear was Persia, right? In ancient times, but today the bear is Russia. The leopard in ancient times was Greece, but the leopard today is China. So you got United States of America, you got China, and you got Russia. Can y'all hear me? Oh, can y'all hear me? Can y'all still hear me? I need I, I need I need I need y'all to say something because I thought I just came in. Okay. Okay. Now listen to this. The Bible says the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Right? Now who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? The beast. So the dragon gave the beast his throne and great authority. Who is the dragon? The dragon is Satan. The dragon is pagan Rome and papal Rome. That's who the dragon is. Who is the beast? The system. So that's Satan giving the beast, which is this system, power and great authority. Now, what beast? 
the B system, which is going to be the United Nations, because this part of the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verses 1 through 10, talks about the anti mashiach So this nation has to be the United Nations. Well, Satan is going to give power and authority, is going to give, uh, yeah, great power and authority to this beast. And this beast is a system, right? This beast is a system which is a superpower, political power, kingdom, and a nation. So this beast that the dragon will give great power and authority to will happen to be the United Nations. But then also, the United Nations, you cannot exclude, disconnect, and separate the United Nations from the anti mashiach Because the beast represents a superpower, Right? Now, the superpower is the anti mashiach He's the superpower, but it's also a political power. The political power happens to be the system, but it's also going to be the anti mashiach Okay? The kingdom is going to happen to be the United Nations. Right? The nation, United Nations. So when you put this B system together, you have the superpower, political power, kingdom, and a nation. Well, that sums up the anti mashiach the man of lawlessness, the son of perdition, right along with the system. Because he's going to be the one world. The man of lawlessness, he's going to be the one world government, the one world currency, and the one world religion. So that's how we know that we're talking about end times. We're talking about what's getting ready to come. The power that's getting ready to come up. Or rather, the power that's getting ready to be established. So there's a superpower, a political power, a kingdom, and a nation that's getting ready to be established. And it's getting ready to be the United Nations that's going to take over the whole earth, take over humanity until Yahushua HaMashiach returns. And then the United Nations and the kings and the princes and the judges will be his inheritance. You see, needless to say, those kings of the earth, those rulers, princes, and judges, if they don't bow down, all of them going to hell. Right? So we know that. Um, so now, verse, it says, The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. Now, this is none other than Rome. Remember when Rome had split into this is ancient Rome. This is the ancient Roman Empire. This is papal Rome. This is papal Rome and pagan Rome. But remember, Rome was picked apart within. So Rome was really never destroyed. It's just that it became divided by these 10 European nations or these 10 European barbaric kings and kingdoms. And so this is how divided Rome became Europe. All right. So that deadly wound that Rome received was when the papacy had went down. The papal authority of Rome had went down and received this deadly blow. But we know this same papal power of the Roman Empire is getting ready to come back into position through the United Nations because the Roman Empire is none other than Esau, Edom. Now you see the dragon. Now you see Esau, the dragon. Now, now, do you see Israel, Jacob, against Esau, Rome? See? But then, but because of Yahushua Mashiach, you have humanity able to be grafted into Jacob. In other words, although they were not original descendants of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel by the bloodline, they could receive Jacob. They could cleave on to Jacob by the spirit, by the set apart spirit. That's Jacob against Esau, against Edom, against the heathens, against the European Union, against the 13 royal satanic bloodline families. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Edom, Esau. Okay? So let's so he says, and I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. Oh, okay. All the world marveled and followed the beast. I need you to stay right there. All the world marveled and followed the beast. That's talking about the new world order. The world will marvel and follow the beast. The world will marvel at and follow the beast. Why? Because this existing system will be destroyed. It will be collapsed.
And this man of lawlessness who happens to be this beast system and the anti machia which is over the beast system, the world whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, they will receive, they will follow this beast system. Meaning the United Nations, the Agenda 2030, meaning uh, the New World Order. The whole world will follow this new system coming because they're going to marvel at this beast. Why? Because he's going to come just like how Satan works with all power, signs and wonders. He's going to come with all power, signs and lying wonders. So the whole world is going to follow this anti-Mashiach power. They're going to follow this global power of the one world government, the one world currency, and the one world religion. They're going to follow him. Y'all understand? So he says, listen, verse three, and I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world marveled and followed the beast. Verse four, so they worship the dragon. They worship Satan. They worship pagan and papal Rome who gave authority to the beast, gave authority to the anti mashiach gave authority to the one world government, the one world currency, and the one world religion, gave authority to the United Nations, gave authority to the European Union, right? But once they give this authority to the beast, which is the anti mashiach they won't need the European Union no more. They won't need the 13 bloodline satanic royal families anymore. Why? Because these 10 European kings, they would have given their authority over to the beast. Right now, these European kings, the European Union, right now, the 13 bloodline satanic royal families, they're ruling right now, setting up the world to be dark enough so that the world will accept Lucifer. The world will accept Satan. The world will accept this man of lawlessness because this man of lawlessness is going to come with everything that looks real, everything that looks like peace, everything that looks like prosperity, everything that looks like wealth, everything that looks so tantalizing. Do you get what I'm saying? So he said, look, so they worship verse four, Revelation chapter 13, verse four. So they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. Now, this is the seed. This is the serpent and the seed of the serpent that we back to again. Right. Right. Genesis chapter three, verses 15. The seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. This dragon and the beast, who's the dragon? The dragon is the serpent. The beast is the seed of the dragon. So we see from Genesis all the way to Revelation, which is where we are now, we see that same prophetic application throughout history coming to power and position in these last days. Okay? So the world... <laughs> They, so they worship the dragon, the world, those who are operating in the world, who love worldliness. So they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast and they worship the beast saying, oh, here we go. And they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? That's what the world going to be saying when this man of lawlessness shows up and he brings peace, this false peace, and he brings false restoration to a chaotic world system that has been destroyed. The world is going to say, who is like the United Nations? Who is like the anti mashiach Who is like him? Who can make war with him? He's coming with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And he's came to give us utopia, came to give us peace, came to give us money, came to give us all of this stuff. Who going to make war with him? That's what the world going to say. Did y'all understand where I'm coming from? Y'all get what I'm saying? Who's going to be able to make war with this beast? The world will ask that question. The ones who don't have faith in Yahushua Mashiach, the ones that don't know the word, don't know the Bible, they don't know nothing, all they know is turned up, all they know is the world, they go ask, who can make war with this, this, this man of lawlessness, bringing false peace, and who going to make war with him? Verse 5. Verse 5. It gets good. It gets better. And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. This is how people are going to be deceived by this man of lawlessness. Why? Because they're going to be flabbergasted and flattered by his smooth rhetoric. They're going to be flattered by his smooth, false benevolence and his false promising words. 
Yeah, I can come. I can give you everything you need. I can give you water. I can give you food. I can give you room and board. I can give you all of that. Wealth, prosperity, whatever you, peace, unity, love. I can give you all of that. And he, he was giving mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, saying that he is Yah. He going to be saying, I'm Elohim. Bow down and worship me. I'm Yah. Bow down and worship me. And because the world don't know, and because the world doesn't know Yah through his word, they're going to accept this man of lawlessness because they're going to be so mesmerized by what they see. They won't have faith enough to know and they won't have discernment enough to know that this man is Satan. This man is false. They won't know that because they'll be thinking about getting bread and water and electricity and gas and a job and money and wealth. They still going to be trying to save their own lives and they won't realize, no, we at the end of a system, baby. No, this is deception right here. They won't know that. They won't realize that. So he says, listen, verse five, and he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Now the 42 months is what? The three and a half years. The 1260 days, the 42 months, that will be the last three and a half years of the seven year tribulation period. Now, the Bible says that the seven year tribulation period is going to be the worst time in history, but it's really going to kick off, intensify and amplify the last three and a half years. OK, so you're going to have a seven year tribulation period and the last three and a half years of that seven, that seven year tribulation period is going to be known as the great tribulation, which is where persecutions are going to be heightened, which is where the anti mashiach is going to enforce the mark of the beast. All right. That hadn't happened yet. It's coming. It's coming. It's on the way. It's in the near future. That's what's coming. See why they ain't talking about it? If you talk about it, you scare people out of their preconceived notion and delusions of an American dream. You scare people out of their fantasy world and their best lives. You get it? They don't want people to be unmotivated and depressed. They still need you to work. They need you to be a slave still. They still need you to be brainwashed. They still need you to idolize your favorite superstars and go to their concerts with your witchcraft initiation ceremonies. They still need you to be in your fraternity and sorority thinking you getting ready to get you some dividends and get you wealth and get you a big house. They need you to still know that. Because the because these Christian pastors, their churches, and the religious system, not just Christianity, but the religious system makes trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars every day. They make billions of dollars every every week, every day, every week, every month, every year off of the ignorance of people. So they can't have a system crashing now. They can't have people, they can't have a multitude of people waking up and seeing the end times. That's the reason why the pastors have been told and taught and trained not to teach this. You can't teach this. Don't you know that many Christian pastors and many churches have been paid not to preach revelation? Do y'all know that? Do you have any idea? Do you know that? Do you know that Christian pastors and Christian churches have been taking money inducements to not preach this? Do you know that Christian pastors and Christian churches have been silenced and they have been threatened that if they do teach this, they'll get their funding revoked? Hey, do you know that? That's serious. The book of Revelation must be that serious in order for them to put such heavy stipulations on it like that. That it must be real serious. Don't you know that Christianity, don't you know that the system of religion, especially Christianity, makes money? They make their wealth off of the book of Revelation not being preached. That's how they make the money. Because if you preach the book of Revelation, you expose the end time. You expose the key players. You expose Freemasonry. You expose the Jesuits. You expose the Illuminati. You expose the European Union. You expose the false Jews in the created state of Israel. You expose the fallen angels in the Nephilim. You expose the Roman Catholic Church. You expose, y'all, what? If you preach this, 
You expose the whole operation. No, sir, we can't have that. And then you know the people going to trust you because you got a degree. So if you don't preach it, well, then the people just going to follow your lead and they're going to feel like, okay, well, it ain't nothing to worry about because you know the pastor, he don't preach it. And so if he's not going to talk about it and preach it, well, then it doesn't matter. We don't need to think about that. And this is how people have been bamboozled into trust leadership with degrees through the educational system because the educational system was only put there to deceive the mass general population into believing that their leadership is credible. Your leadership isn't credible. Your leadership is under the deception. Your leadership are puppets. Your leadership are slaves, obedient slaves. Your leadership are wolves in sheep's clothing. That's who your leadership, that's who your leadership are. That's who your leadership is, shall I say. Your leadership, your leadership is wolves in sheep's clothing. Your leadership are wolves in sheep's clothing. That's and then see why? Because they are hiding. They're hiding their true intent with their false benevolence and 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 their care for the people and all of that. Well, if you really care, tell us the truth. And then we'll fill in the holes and fill in the blanks by ourselves and by our study and but when you don't tell the people the truth, you really give them no foundation because the people rely on the pastors. They rely on authentic, solid leadership. So if the leaders don't say nothing, the people follow the leader. They don't. If the leaders don't say it's important, if the leaders think it's unimportant, well, so with the people that follow the leader. So what happens is that the leadership provide no basis. They provide no foundation for the people to say, okay, we have something to go off of. Now let us do our own research. Let us fill in the holes and fill in the blanks because we have a nice, hefty, solid foundation to go off of. But when you don't preach nothing, people don't have a, 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 a sound base. And any and listen, you should know it's something wrong when all you hear is prosperity, all you hear is good health, wealth, blessings. Best life, name it and claim it. We will have our best year. When all that, when that's all you hear, you know that's Satan. You know that's a lie when you hear that. That's uh, Yah does not operate like that. Why? Because Yah's kingdom is not here on earth. Yah's kingdom is spiritual. Yah's kingdom is for eternity. Yah's kingdom is not based on you getting a new house here. His kingdom is not based on you getting a better job and more degrees and more money and turn. No. So anytime you keep hearing pastors preach like that, you know they preaching from the dragon. You know they preaching from the beast system. You know they preaching from lies. Come, you know that. But people don't want to hear the truth. There's an assault on the truth. There's a deceptive, strategic, spiritual weapon formed to go against the truth. Listen, Revelation chapter 13, verses five, he says, look, and he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue 42 months. So this anti-Mashiach and this B system coming up, the new world order, the United Nations, he's going to be given authority to continue for 42 months. That's three and a half years. 1260 days, which in Bible prophecy are literal years. So we're talking 42 months, three and a half years, 1260 days. In Bible prophecy, days are years. So that's the great tribulation period that has yet to come, that has yet to show up. And then and he's saying here, uh, verse six, then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against Elohim. So this anti-Mashiach, he's going to open his mouth and speak bad and speak down and speak in opposition to Elohim. Why? Because this anti-Mashiach power is going to convince people that he's Elohim. See? So basically, this anti-Mashiach power, he's going to be speaking against our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and Yahushua Mashiach, our true Hebrew Messiah and Savior. He's going to be speaking against the kingdom of heaven. He's going to be speaking against the New Jerusalem. He's going to be speaking against anything that has anything to do with Yahuwah. 
He's going to be speaking against that. anti Mashiach is going to be speaking against Yahuwah, our Heavenly Father, and Yahushua HaMashiach, our true Hebrew Messiah and Savior. So, verse 6. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Elohim to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. So that just goes to show you that this man of lawlessness is going to be speaking against heavenly things. He's going to be speaking against Yah and his people. Verse 7. Are you ready? Y'all ready for me? Verse 7. Pay close attention. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. There goes the rapture lie debunked. How the saints, how was this man of lawlessness, how was the seed of the serpent, how was Satan and his man of lawlessness going to be making war against the saints when the saints are raptured up? That goes to show you the saints will not be raptured up. The saints are going to be here dealing with the warfare. Come on, y'all. Verse 7. It was granted to him to make war with the saints. And to overcome them. And to overcome the saints. It was granted to this beast, to this anti mashiach this man of lawlessness, this son of perdition. It was granted. Him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. In other words, there are going to be some of us that will not make it. But we'll be saved though. What you think the beheading is all about? What you think the persecutions and the beheading is about? That means the overcoming of the saints. Because during the last uh the last three and a half years of the seven-year tribulation period, some of our people will be beheaded. We will be persecuted. You get it? Now, I thought we was going to be raptured up before it got bad. I thought we was going to be living like we want to live. And then before it get bad, we were just going to disappear out of thin air and be in our mansion in heaven. I thought that that's what that wasn't that what they told us. They told us the Christian church is going to be raptured up, up out of here. They're going to be gone. That's what they told. That's what they told. That's what they told me. That, that, that's what we were taught. The Christian church is gone and 144,000 Jews. See how they had to wrap up the 144,000 as Jews? Why did they do that? No, the 144,000 comprises of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? Different tribes. But they had to comprise the 144,000 to the Jews to correspond with their lie and their deception about those over there in the created state of Israel being the only ones that go to heaven. When no, 144,000 deals with 12,000 from each tribe of Israel. Come on. Okay. So, verse 6, then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against Elohim to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Verse 7, it was granted to him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, every tribe, tongue, and nation. In other words, humanity. Humanity. This anti mashiach global power of the New World Order and the United Nations, he will be given authority over humanity. He will be given authority over anybody, everybody, no matter what tribe you come from, no matter what nation you come from, no matter what language you speak. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Because by the time the great tribulation happens, you're going to have Caucasians that believe in Yahushua HaMashiach like some already do now because they have embraced the Hebraic awakening. They have embraced the truth. They've come out of this pagan Christianity. They stopped calling out Hebrew Messiah Yahushua HaMashiach, this false white Jesus. They come out of pagan celebrations. They come out of these fraternities and sororities. So you already have Caucasian brothers and sisters who have already received the set apart spirit because they embrace the truth. Just like you have Japanese. You have Asians, you have Koreans, you have Hispanics, you have, so you can, so, so, so when we talk, so when the scripture says that, listen, it was granted to him to make war with the saints and overcome them and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue and nation. That means that you're going to have humanity. So then that means that eternal life, that means that being the set up part of the set apart ones is not only confined to the Hebrews by the bloodline or the 12 tribes of Israel. 
salvation and being set apart has been extended to the Gentiles of these other nations, humanity. But that's the, the dragon's goal is to stop humanity from receiving Yahushua. That's the reason why Satan got to keep a war, a racism war going on. That's why he got to keep a race war going. Why? He wants to keep us divided as humanity so that we can fight each other, kill each other and go to hell. That's what he wants. Because just because you're a Hebrew by the bloodline, that doesn't mean that you're going to heaven. That does not mean that you will receive eternal life. That does not mean you will inherit eternal life just because you come from the bloodline of Israel. Just because you y'all's chosen people by the bloodline. Because you can still go to hell based upon you not being born again and your heart condition. That's the reason why it's important that you get that racism out of your heart. Because if you don't get that racism out of your heart, you could be a Hebrew by the bloodline or you could be a Caucasian and you both going to be going to hell. Get it? Get it? Okay. So it says, verse 7, Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Verse 8, all who dwell on the earth will worship him. You hear that? All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In other words, if your name is not inscribed in the book of eternal life, you're going to worship this man of lawlessness that's coming. You're going to worship this, this anti-Mashiach coming. This is serious, serious, serious business. In other words, there are going to be many, many, many children of parents who didn't know the word that's going to go to hell on the account of their parents not teaching them the word. But the parents only taught the children how to get money, how to go to school, graduate from high school, go to college for four years, get your four-year college degree, get your get your job, get your profession, get your occupation, get you a big old house, get your cars, get your... See? And when you teach them that and you keep them confined to that way of thinking and you never teach them the word, they're going to take the mark of the beast. Because the mark of the beast is going to be only given to those. Those who accept the mark of the beast will be the ones who want to enjoy this world only. And they won't have any understanding and knowledge and wisdom about the afterlife. They won't have any concept of eternal life. They would have been taught that they can live eternal life here. Through artificial intelligence and transhumanism. That's why they're trying to turn you into robots now when they're trying to alter your DNA because they're trying to make you the image of this beast system so you can be one of the dragons. The whole thing is, and the only thing is, is that you will not receive what you thought you was going to receive. You will be an eternal global slave. And you will not have prosperity and you will not have all this wealth and you will not have your mansions and all of that. That would have been the deception. And not only you will not, not only will you not receive wealth and your, and your nice house and your big old house and your cars because of your college degrees and your intellect. Not only will you not receive that, what was promised by the system, you won't receive eternal life. So that means you're going to live hell here and when you leave. For eternity. Oh man, come on, y'all. You see that? Okay. I feel like I'm preaching too hard. I feel like, okay. Uh, verse seven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints. It was granted to him to make war with the saints. So this anti Mashiach is going to make war with the saints. So the saints are not going to be raptured up nowhere. The saints are going to be here to deal with spiritual warfare. They're going to be here to live out the word that they've been saying that they love so much. They're going to be here to live it out. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Some of us won't be here. Some of us are going to die prematurely, but you still got to be living right. That means that, okay, fine, you might not see the man of lawlessness. You might not see the end of this existing system. You might not see the new world order. You might not see what's to come, but you. But what if you die today? What if you die tomorrow? Were you born again? Were you saved? Did you repent? Did you come out of sin? Do you hear me? So don't think that you're going to duck something because you didn't see the end because if you die now or you die tonight, tomorrow, next week, and you didn't repent and you were not saved and you were not born again, 
which means if you had children, you didn't teach them. Not only are you going to hell when you die, so will your children if they don't receive the truth before they die. So that means somebody got to teach him this word. Somebody got to teach him about scripture. Somebody has to teach him about our heavenly father, Yahuwah. Somebody has to teach him about our Hebrew Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach. Someone has to teach him how to live right. Someone has to, you get that? So that's what I mean by there is no way out of this. You, there's no way for you or I. There's no way out. We can't, ain't no way out of this. You cannot buy your way out of this. You cannot intellectualize your way out of this. You cannot use your degrees to get out of this. Your money cannot buy you out of this. Your smarts cannot buy you out of this. I don't care what you do. You cannot get yourself out of this, but going the way of the way and the truth and the life. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So, so you better be living right. Any, anyway. Either way you look at it, you better be living right. Either way. Because you don't want to get caught sleeping. You don't want to get caught sleeping. And you definitely don't want to be unprepared for when it all comes down and things get worse. And you see people around you losing. They losing. Because we're going to have another stock market crash. There's going to be another stock market crash. There's going to be another housing market crash. There's going to be... Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Every financial collapse and crash that has happened in United States American history and even across the whole world is only a drill for what's to finally come. There's a final collapse that's coming, which will be known as the Great Tribulation, which is deemed as the worst period in world's history. So everything that we're facing right now in terms of natural disasters, inclement weather, Bouts of famines in these different countries and persecutions for believing in the word. All of this stuff is getting us prepared for the worst time. So just because you're comfortable today, that does not necessarily mean you're going to experience the same comfort two years from now or even next year. You see that? No matter how stable you think you are financially, no matter how strong you think you are, no matter how smart you think you are, that can all change in one day. So now if that can change in it, so now if that can change in one day, just imagine in two years, five years. You come on. And people don't even see this. And it's gonna devastate folk so much so they gonna wanna die. It's going to devastate folks so much they're going to want to kill themselves. It's going to devastate folks so much they're going to want to get on drugs. They're going to want to. But that's going to make it worse. You, so you see, ain't no way out. You can't drink your way out of this, smoke your way out of this, sex your way out of this, eat your way out of this, party your way out of this, turn up your way out of this. You can't. It's not going to work. It ain't going to work. But that's what people are doing today to ignore the truth. What are people doing right now today to ignore the truth? They turning their eyes and their ears off and they saying, I'm going to keep on living just how I'm living until we can't live this way no more. Which is a fatal, fatal, destructive mistake. It's fatal. It's going to cost you. See? Because do you want me to tell you what's worse than dying in a split second? You want me to tell you what's worse than that? It's to go through hell. It's to go through torment. It's to go through persecution. It's to go through the pain. It's to have to go through the, the discomfort. That's worse. Because it's a slow death before you actually die. But within that period of uncomfortability, within that period of discomfort, within that period of financial lack and poverty and diseases, you have to make a decision what side you're going to be on in the midst of cataclysmic events and catastrophic and tragic and tragic events. You have to make you would have to make a decision then. It's not going to be a process where you're going to die automatically just like that. No. What if you have to live through it? It's almost like a sick person. The worst thing for a sick person is to have to live a life of pain. 
and to live a life of torment. Why? Because their because their quality of life has been diminished and they have to live through the pain. That's the reason why it's even a dangerous thing to say, well, you know, I'm going to do what I want, live how I want, eat what I want, drink whatever I want, anytime I want to. Why? Because you might not die from the disease. You might not die from the ailment. You might have to walk around with a limp on 10 different medications, going to the doctor every five minutes, hurting in, in pain, joint pain, muscle pain. You see, you might not die right away. You might have to go through the pain and the torment and you still will have to live right. You still will have to praise Yah. You still will have to give him your life. You still gonna have to surrender and submit to him fully in the midst of your discomfort, in the midst of your lack, in the midst of your poverty, in the midst of you doing without, in the midst of nobody loving you, in the midst of your relatives back in the way rejecting you, in the midst of no friends, in the do y'all... You hear what I'm saying? Do you hear me? So the best thing you could do is start living the word now and see how many people want to be your friend. Live the word now and see how many people still love you. Live the word now and see how many people want to hear the truth. Because right now, all you're doing is preparing yourself to deal with what's coming. And them same people that ignored you, hopefully they didn't die in their sin and they can start to live right based upon and on the account of you already living right. I told y'all that this was coming, man. I told you. I told y'all. See? You don't want to be the one saying, what was you saying again? What was the word? What was you saying? What's happening? What's going on? No, you want to be the I told you so guy. But you don't even want to, but you still... Don't want to be arrogant and boastful and haughty and prideful because you still got to love folk and help folk and extend a helping hand and teach them the word. But I'd rather be the I told you so God than the one that's trying to figure out what was happening. Well, what's this? Oh, God, please help me. What was this? What's that? Did somebody help me? Can I? Nah, I'd rather be the I told you so God. Because I decided that I would do without those who don't want him now. I say I just live. I just be lonely. I just be lonely without folk. Don't nobody want to talk to me, call me. They don't want to hear this, you know, because let me help you. With worldly people who proclaim God, Lord, and Jesus, and they bless, have you ever noticed that there's never a convenient time to talk about the one they say they love, the one they say they believe in? There's never a convenient time. If you try to talk about Yah, if you try to, to them, if you try to talk about God during the cookout, they don't want to hear because they're having a good time. You can't talk about God then, but they say they blessed. They say they highly favored, right? Well, why we can't talk about God during the cookout? You can't talk about God in the club. Why? Because they clubbing and partying. Why you got to bring the Bible? Why you got to bring religion? So there's never a convenient time to talk about the God they say they, they love. The God they say they love and the God they say they believe in and the God they say that's blessing them. There's never a convenient time to talk about him during the midst of whatever they're doing. You see that? So that just goes to show you. All right. All right. Okay. Verse 8. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life or the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So that means that if your name is not written in, in the book of life or the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, that means you know where you're going. You know, you know, your destination is eternal hellfire, the lake of fire, which is where the false prophet and the anti-Mashiach will be thrown in alive when Yahusha returns. So, 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 so see, you have a, and, 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 and you know what? When you read this word like this, it's almost like you can't get in your head that this is just a fairy tale. And it's just a comic book. No, this is really going to happen. <laughs> when you when you think when you like when you really 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 like focus in on it and you really think about it and you process it and take it all in, you say, "Man, this is really going to happen." Meaning, this is not something that's going to go away. I could try to ignore it. I could try to get my mind off of it. I could try to distract myself, but this ain't going away. It's only just going to get worse, but it ain't going to go away. Ain't going, ain't going nowhere. Ain't going nowhere. Yah's word is eternal. It's forever. That's the reason why Isaiah chapter 40, that's the reason why Isaiah chapter 40 verses 8 says that the grass wither and the flower fades, but the word of our Elohim shall stand forever. 
So you could try to duck it and don't want to hear it, but his word is the only thing that's going to be forever. Past this life, on to the next. So you could duck it now, but you're going to have to deal with it later. Just imagine hearing his word in hell where you can't run from it. And then you cannot experience the gracious, loving benefits, the peaceful benefits of living in accordance to Yah's word when you die. Just imagine having to live, having to hear it and, and hear his word in hell. Just imagine that. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. You can't hear his loving word and decide, I repent. Heavenly Father, no, once you inhale, that's it. You can't come back to live the word, repent, ask for forgiveness. There is no being with family. There is no teaching the word to your family. There is no them teaching the word to you. Just think about it. It. And we talk in eternity forever. Forever and ever 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 and forever. If your mind can fathom forever. Once you where you are, that's it. You ain't you ain't can't come back on the other side. It just gives you something to think about. You know? Like, I'm a thief. I can't keep stealing. I can't keep stealing forever. I'm a fornicator. I, I can't keep fornicating forever. I'm an adulterer. I, I can't keep doing this. I'm an adulteress. I can't keep doing this forever. I'm a heathen. I can't keep li I can't keep doing this forever. I'm a homosexual. I can't keep, I can't, I gotta get delivered from this. I can't be like this forever. I'm a murderer. I'm a hater. I'm a habitual liar. I, I, I can't keep being like this forever. I'm a drunkard. I, I, can't, I can't keep being like this forever. I'm a slanderer. I can't keep being like this forever. I'm a whoremonger. I can't keep being like this forever. I'm an idolater. Meaning I have idols. I can't, I, I gotta drop all my idols. I can't, I can't live like an idolater forever. You see? These are the things that you must consider. Hallelujah. Got to consider it. Got to consider it because a day is coming. All right. Verse nine. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads in the captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, we know that that, that uh, particular passage has a historical application to it, but as it relates to these end times and the man of lawlessness that's getting ready to come, he who leads into captivity. Well, this man of lawlessness is going to lead many into captivity. So this eternal global enslavement is going to be the captivity. It's going to be the eternal captivity of the new world order. Do you, you get it? That's the captivity where you will be an obedient worker and an obedient slave and you will have the mark of the beast and you will be a beast robot and a demon. And this man of lawlessness, it says, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who, the beast system, he who leads into captivity, global enslavement, he shall go into captivity. Meaning he, his captivity is going to be in the lake of fire. His captivity is going to be when Yahushua Mashiach returns. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Okay, he who kills with the sword, right? The anti-Mashiach is going to kill with the sword. Well, what's the sword? The sword represents the word, but the word of the anti-Mashiach is going to be his regulations, going to be his laws, going to be his mandates, is going to be his enforcing of the mark of the beast. It's going to be what he says to do based upon his global totalitarian power, right? So he who he's going to kill many people with his word and with his falsehood and with what he says. But then he, but then he must be killed with the sword. He's going to be killed with the word of Elohim, he's going to get, he's going to be killed with the sharp sword that comes out of the mouth of the lamb who will be the lion when he returns, right? This, this, this sword that's going to come out of the mouth of Yahushua Mashiach that's going to strike down the nations, this sword will strike down the nations, but this anti-Mashiach and the false prophet will be subjected to the sword of Yahushua Mashiach that comes out of his mouth, the same sword that strikes down the nations. So here is the patience and faith of the saints. So this is where we must be patient. Now I'm not going to go into verse 11. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there because that 
uh, verse 11, verse 11 to 18 uh, speaks of the false prophet. And it really speaks of this, the United States of America. What I read you was everything rolled into one. I just read you the end. I just read you the, the, the ultimate goal and the ultimate plan. That's what I just read you. Okay. So that's the war. It's a spiritual warfare. It's the battle. The serpent and the seed of the serpent versus the woman and the seed of the woman. Jacob and Esau, the 12 tribes of Israel versus the 13 satanic royal bloodline, Illuminati satanic families. Yah's 12 versus Satan's 13. Uh, Y'all got to get it. That's what it is. As it, as it relates to the bloodline. As it relates to bloodline. Because I told you, the goal has always first been to, to exterminate bloodline. Exterminate bloodline. But Yah, but see, Yah was showing us that it doesn't matter if Satan tries to destroy the bloodline because he can't destroy the spirit, which is the reason why, first of all, Yahushua, he had to recompense us with his own blood and he had to have perfect blood. This is the reason why Yahushua coming down as a man, that's why he couldn't come down through the bloodline. Because Satan spent his time here on earth corrupting the bloodlines. So Yahushua had to supersede and escape and override the bloodline in terms of his birth, be born of a virgin so he can escape the corruption of Satan through the bloodline. So he can have the perfect blood that would be shed for humanity. Oh man, that, that right there is enough right there. See, so no matter what bloodline you came from, the only blood that would really truly matter is Yahushua. And the plus would be he came from the tribe of Judah. He came from the tribe of Yahuda. So that would be like that, that, that would be for the bloodline that now you see what I'm saying in terms of the lie that has been perpetuated about where Yahushua really came from. Because the lie has been that, you know, Yahushua or Jesus is Jewish. So based upon the lie that has been set, Yahushua didn't come from the 12 tribes of Israel. He came from the Jewish people, but then they tried to link the Jewish people with the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the reason why they never bring up the 12 tribes of Israel. They only link it down. They condense it down to Jewish. That's it. They never brought out the 12 tribes of Israel. They always lumped it up together and put emphasis on Jewish, Jews, Jewish, Jewish. Why? Because they wanted to make us believe that the true people are Jewish and not the 12 tribes of Israel, which are separate tribes that belong to Jacob. These are Jacob's 12 sons. Jacob's, Jacob became Israel and he had 12 sons, 12 tribes. So to destroy that truth and to undermine and suppress that truth, we got to put emphasis on Jews, Jewish, 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 Jewish. And that's the reason why when you consider the British Israel theology and Christian Zionism replacement theology, which is supersessionism, what do they teach? They teach that, you know, um, the Christian church and then God's chosen people, which are the Jewish people. See, so they lump all of us together with the Christians. But then the Jewish people are special, separate, unique, special people. Y'all see that? Never put an emphasis on the fact that this Christian church is comprised of all nations, especially y'all's chosen people of the bloodline, who are Hebrews, whom they told us we came from the ham line. That's why the Christian pastors preach they from ham. They from Canaan. They from the Ham line. Why? Because if you preach you from the Ham line, that is the line of Egypt. Ham's line is Egypt. Canaan. 
Mizraim, see, Egypt, Mizraim, Libya, Put, Canaan, Babylon, Ethiopia. So they had to say we was from Ham. Why? Because according to Ham and the son of Ham, which is Canaan, Canaan would be cursed. So that's the reason. So the curses of Deuteronomy, which are the curses that Yah's chosen people and his bloodline, Hebrews, were subjected to the curses of Deuteronomy is separate from the curse of Canaan. You understand that? See, so if you preach the Hebrews, if you preach who the true Hebrews are by the bloodline, who the true Israelites are of the scripture, then you would have to talk about the transatlantic slave trade. Then you would have to talk about the 400 year prophecy. And then you would have to talk about those who, then you would have to talk about those who, who actually are blood descendants of Yahushua HaMashiach. So to scrap that, we must line everybody up with Canaan, with the Ham line, the true Hebrews. We must line them up with the Ham line. Because if we identify Yah's chosen people, the Hebrews of the bloodline, the Hebrews of scripture, then we must bring out the curses of Deuteronomy. If we bring out the curses of Deuteronomy and we connect the true Hebrews with the curses of Deuteronomy, then... They know who we talking about. They know who they are. They know who those people are versus those who say they are the people but are not. You see that? So you guys, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. You need to know the war. You need to know the spiritual war. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Father, for your word today. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your power, your strength. Uh, Father, we just thank you, Father, for allowing us to be in your presence, allowing us another day to get it right, another day to repent. Uh, we thank you for a roof over our head, clothes on our back, and food on our table. We thank you for clothing us in our right frame of minds and giving us the activity of our limbs. We thank you for the Davis Ministry family, the body of Mashiach, those who sustain the Davis Ministry with their gifts and offerings, those who uh, show us love, those uh, who extend their encouragement, their love, uh, their prayers, and even their fellowship. Father, we thank you so much. We ask that you would continue to bless them 160 and 30 fold times over in all areas and aspects of their lives. Father, we ask that you would continue uh, to, to protect their children, their, their, their homes, their family, their spouses. Father, we just ask that you would keep us on fire for your word and cold for the world. Father, we just truly ask that you would keep us that, that, that you would keep us in faith with you, keep us in communication because we cannot do this walk all by ourselves. Father, we ask that you would increase as we continue to decrease. Father, we thank you for what you have already done for us, for what you are currently presently doing for us and for what we know you will most certainly do in the future by prayer, supplication and thanksgiving, if it is indeed in your will. It is in all of these blessings that we do ask in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, our personal Messiah and Savior, we pray and we most certainly give you the highest utmost praise. And we do gratefully say hallelujah. You guys, hallelujah. Um, if it's in Yah's will, I mean, we'll continue to. Uh, we continue to do what we do. Uh, there's more to this. There was more to this word, more to this particular message. Uh, but I'm going to stop here uh, for right now. Um, but yeah, we have to continue to keep up. We have to continue to keep this, keep this, this, this type of preaching going because so many people don't know uh, this type of, they don't know this end time word. And it's very heavy, but it is very highly needed because it allows you to be able to see where you are spiritually, where you are, even physically in the world and how society is going and moving and the trajectory in which society is moving. You're able to see. You see, so you guys, hallelujah. That is it. I love you all. All right. Bye bye.